Hey friends, it's Michael Goldsman here. I want to talk to you a little bit about spiritual clearing work around money. It can be so interesting because money is such an important issue to all of us here on earth. And particularly when you're on a spiritual path, when you're aware that we are more than just our five physical senses and that there's some greater connection we might call spirit or we might call God or presence or being or angels, whatever it is. This brings up some other interesting points and issues around money that are important for spiritual people to to work with and to assimilate and to integrate. So being able to make a living, being able to provide for yourself and for your family, being able to have abundance as it is mat manifest in the material plane as as money, as income, as regular income, as um, and all the ramifications of that, to feel provided for, to feel like you have enough clothing, food, um, shelter, not only that, but to feel abundant and that you have everything that you want or desire. This is something all too rare uh, on the earth plane and all too rare even for people who are on a spiritual path who know more about the energetic underpinnings of reality. And this has really gotten me thinking and researching over the years as to how to best serve people who will find a video like this, people who will find energy and spiritual clearing work, and how to help them to be able to find their way to that space of increased income. I want to say that in my spiritual research, I have really found, and it's been often said, that money is never really about money, or money issues are never about money. Money is an effect, it's not a cause. People often, and I have said this myself in the past, if I only had more money, I could do X, Y, and Z, or I wouldn't have to do X, Y, or Z. I used to think that um, when I was much younger, that if I could just find a way to get some sort of high paying job, I could make all the money that I wanted or needed, and then I could quit that job, retire, quote unquote, and then I could do what I want with my life. Now. That whole scenario is not a very spiritually integrated perspective. Because from spiritual perspective, money is a result, not a cause. Money is a result of being in alignment with the abundance of the universe, a source, and your unique purpose for being, being in the flow of that. So it's really about being in the flow. It's really about giving up the blockages to the flow and about being totally in the flow. And now for money to manifest, it has to be spiritually in the flow, as well as emotionally, mentally, and physically, in terms of even our physical bodies perhaps, or in terms of our physical action that we're taking here on the earth. So this can be a challenging issue for many people to fully integrate. Many people do a lot of spiritual clearing work even, and find still money to be eluding them somehow. And this can be the result of lack of integration, lack of grounding, lack of real flow on all levels of our being. It's really interesting that we all seem to want more money. And yet money is one of those things that really causes and motivates us to figure out how can we do it? How can we do it in a way that feels really good? How can we do it in a way that feels like it's spiritually integrated and attuned with us as well? This is uh, this is simple, but not easy. It's simple for me to say to be in the flow of the universe, but we may have thousands of lifetimes in which we have put up blockages in our spiritual programming, in our subconscious mind, thousands of situations in which we have not released or forgiven ourselves and others, or the universe and our concept of God. Forgiveness or lack of forgiveness is a major, major issue when it comes to manifesting abundance. People may do all the right things, but if they're holding in their heart resentment around themselves or anger around God or their parents, why didn't my parent do this for me, this and in previous lifetimes, then it's difficult. That's, that's, the, that's a blockage to flow. It's difficult for flow to show up when those barriers to flow are there. So in my spiritual clearing research, I have really found it interesting that money is often associated with the second chakra. Okay, so just to sort of give it a little bit more groundedness and a little bit more shape here, money is often associated with the sacral chakra or second chakra, which is 
just below the navel. It's lower in the body, in the physical body, or it's in the etheric body. It also relates to the area in the back of the body as well, to the low back. Okay, so think about the low back for a minute. Many people experience low back pain, chronic low back pain, congestion, issues in this area. These can all show up as emotional, physical, mental blockages to money. They can be worry and fear stored in these areas from all sorts of areas of our subconscious that are blocking the flow of this area of our being. So think about it, second chakra, it's lower in the physical body, it connects us more into earth plane. Um, it's spiritually part of our being, it's part of our etheric body of course, every part of our being is ultimately part of spiritual, but it's connected more downwards in our physical body, meaning it's more oriented towards the physical and earth plane. This area, the low abdomen, the hips, the low back, the kidneys, is a where, where we can often store a lot of our childhood and early developmental fears, blockages, worries, restrictions, lack of safety and lack of trust about the bounty, abundance, and ease of being physically alive, being physically incarnated, being in this physical universe. It's where we can take a lot of our parental worries. If our parents, as is often the case around the time of physical birth, when we were young, when our parents were just newly parents for us, a lot of financial fears and worries and fears of survival can come up for our parents during that time because it's expensive to have a child. And we can inherit these fears and these beliefs. Until these things are really resolved, until we're more in that flow, until we've really opened up the issues of the hips and the low back and the second chakra, and all of the spiritual issues that these areas represent, it's going to be difficult for us to feel in the flow of abundance and money. Now, one of the issues here is that a lot of this stuff is subconscious to us. A lot of this stuff is not something, if I talk to you right now and say, well, who are you holding anger or resentment against? Who, what, what kinds of fears about survival do you have? You may or may not really be able to tell me anything specific that you recall because these can come from very deep in childhood. They can come from even within the womb. They can come even from the time of conception. They can come from a myriad amounts of our soul's history, which I refer to as past lives as well. We could have brought these in with us and these things are often beyond our conscious mind. I have been working with and developing some technologies to help specifically address, I have found them very useful for myself and for my clients, to really specifically address and clear a lot of these deep, what, are, what I call low programs, low consciousness survival fears that can be blocking us around money. We can do all the right mental work sometimes. We can say all the positive affirmations. We can even be getting into careers that may or may not be, they may be appropriate for us. They may be like, okay, that's something that's kind of aligned with us. But what we are vibrating to at a subconscious level, if we're vibrating to a lot of fear, to a lot of worry, to a lot of anxiety, to a lot of belief that the universe and the physical body, the physical earth plane is not a safe place, that will trump for us any tendencies to be in flow. Flow implies relaxation, it implies ease, it implies kind of a lightness. If you imagine a wonderful trickling stream moving slowly with wonderful warm water, it's kind of just like it just curves around different kinds of rocks and it, it just flows where it's led, whatever the stream may be leading, the water flows there. That's the opposite of kind of blockages hardness, stiffness of energy, which comes from fear. Fear often feels like contraction, tension, compression, darkness. These are the types of things that can come up both literally and metaphorically when we're feeling senses of fear. Even if we had a lot of sense of fear 20 years ago or 20 lifetimes ago, if we have never cleared this, if we've never let it be released from our system, this will still be affecting us positively today. And no matter how much positive <laughs> new age stuff we dump into our system, no matter how much we work with mindset sometimes, no matter how much we work with trying to figure out the right job, no matter how much we try to work with getting into the right situation where money is possible, it may still feel like it eludes us. So I want to share with you a brief clearing process now where we're going to work on some of these issues. And I want to also use this as an invitation to you that the, the course of this whole month, we're going to be focusing on approximately five to six or seven hours, depending on how long the clearings take, 
about seven distinct clearings where we're going to be working in a group setting with these particular energies. We don't necessarily have to know what they are exactly. Spirit will guide us. And what I have found throughout this work is that people have a lot of sensation of clearing in the hips, in the tailbone, in the lumbar spine, in the sacral chakra. These whole areas can literally be preventing us, if they're blocked, they can be preventing us from being feeling in the flow. Now I want to introduce you to a bit of a process. So I'm just going to ask, I'm going to grab my pendulum here. I'm just going to ask Spirit to begin prepping and clearing each person who is watching this video now. And to begin just aligning us and clearing any uh, blocks and interference and such that might be preventing us from being in a state where we can really be receptive to this clearing. So Spirit, just go through all points for each person here. And just take a few deep breaths where you're at right now. You're going to be, fe be feeling, no matter when you come across this video, you may begin to feel a little bit of lightness and tingliness and sensation around you. This because spirit doesn't have any time or space restrictions. It doesn't really matter if I know who you are when you watch this video. Um, spirit will be doing the clearing for you. So spirit, just make sure everyone's prepped and cleared and working with their high self, please. And let's just breathe and allow, allow spirit to work its magic with us for a few moments and just come into a place of willingness and alignment and openness. Accepting and knowing, and this is part of the process of clearing, that spirit is the ultimate source of safety, that being connected to spirit, being one with spirit, being one with life, it is safe for us to be incarnated here on the earth planet, it's safe for us to open ourselves to, uh, to even risk abundance, you know? Being in the state of flow, being in a state of openness is a state of letting go and letting God. It's a state of risk in some ways because we have to trust that the universe will provide. We can't be in a state of restriction. Every time I've tried to be in a state of restriction in my life or I've tried to kind of clamp down in some way and say, well, my ego now exactly understands what I have to do. I get out of the flow when I do that. And so it's all about being in the flow, being open to continuously practicing the, the energy of trust with spirit Spirit, show me when each person is 100% prepped and cleared, please. Just feel the shifts and changes happening with you. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into, um, Spirit showed me before this recording began, a particular place in consciousness which is very, very, very low in consciousness. It's a place where we hold a lot of deep shame. The shame could be related to physical health conditions. It could be causing physical health conditions. It could be related to money. It could be related to uh, really uh, any number of thousands of different types of scenarios. It doesn't really matter for our intents and purposes here what it's related to. Uh, it just can be blocking our sense of money. And remember having the inner, the inner openness to money, the inner sense that this universe is abundant and benevolent and that we want to trust and we want to be in the flow. That's the first step in being able to enter into that flow. If we're not willing to even declare that for ourselves, if we're not willing to even open to that, we will not be able to be in that space very easily. So Spirit, what percent of this group is prepped and cleared? Great. How many blocks of interference do we have? We have zero. So Spirit, we're going to go to a place in consciousness known as three. This is the number three. This is very low. What percent of the people here, Spirit, have some programs here? Okay, so I want you to just feel the sensation in your low back and your low abdomen as we do this particular clearing. Spirit, I ask you to please apply a spiritual kick for each person here. I ask you to please clear, cancel, burn, remove, delete 100% of all hidden and overt discordant item spirit at level of consciousness three for this entire group. Now this includes all programs, contracts, vows, beliefs, judgments, perceptions, discordant energies, unresolved energy spirit that are in any way blocking the sensation, the feeling, the trust the ability to be in a state of trust and allowing with the energy of money in our being now. We ask you to clear for each person through infinite depths, levels, layers, bodies, minds, all six realities now, clearing up this karma. We're doing a really a karmic clearing right now of all of the discordant items that are a particular place in consciousness within your being right now, known as level three. And by saying this, I'm actually referencing level three on the David Hawkins scale of consciousness, if that's a familiar term to you. If not, just let it pass you by. <laughs> this is very the very deep levels of shame. So just feel what's happening in your being right now. I can feel a, a shift in consciousness. 
Thank you, Spirit. So what's the benefit of doing uh, point four for each person now? Right? Spirit's guiding us to do a few more points. Spirit, we ask you please apply a spiritual kick. Please clear, cancel, burn, remove, delete 100% of all hidden and overt discordant items, programs, contracts, vows, unresolved energies at level four in consciousness now. Hidden and overt, clearing all the reasons and hidden reasons why anything is hidden for this entire group at level four in consciousness now. Clearing through infinite depths, levels, layers. There we go. Just feel this happening for you now. You might feel some sensations in your low back, okay? So one of the things I have found about money, this is just to sort of break it down as something very simple and easy to apply, is that when our lumbar spine, when our tailbone and the first five or so vertebrae of our spine, in the base of our spine, are open, flowing, receptive, cleared of these emotional and karmic programs, whatever's coming up in our soul, we tend to be able to enter into that stream or flow more. We tend to be able to feel and sense that flow. If we can't feel or sense it, we're not in it. That's the thing about intuitive living is that we have to be able to feel and sense spirit's presence around us and all the way spirit interacts with us. If we're looking for money, we have to be able to feel spirit in our low back and in our low abdomen. Spirit, keep clearing up on this, please, and do a quick mop up for this entire group. I just feel the sensations happening to you. So we're going to go in depth during this month to do really, as I said, uh, seven major clearings uh, in this particular way, looking at specifically scanning the people in this group for where are their blockages to money coming in and working in this way to help alleviate all the karmic blockages, unresolved childhood energies, unresolved emotions, all this sort of thing. Now I want to say, as Spirit brings this clearing portion of the program to a conclusion, just because we're doing this spiritual work, some people do this spiritual work and they still don't feel like they're having the results they're looking for. This spiritual work does not, uh, is not a magic wand and it's not going to sort of get you off the hook from having to do the inner work and the outer work that you need to do in order to manifest that money in your physical reality. This is going to make it a whole lot easier because we're actually clearing up a lot of the contradictory discordant energies in your subconscious mind and in your soul records. But if you're at a job that you know isn't the right job for you, you know that you're in someone else's job because you need to quit and someone else needs to take your job for you so you can move on to something else, this isn't going to make you all of a sudden um, your employer is going to offer you a million dollars a year. If you're in scenarios, relationships for instance, um, where they're just inappropriate or you're losing your power in the relationships or you haven't done the emotional mental forgiveness work around people that you know you haven't forgiven in your life you're not really willing or open to do um, you know uh, positive affirmations or working with yourself to really love yourself unconditionally this work is going to help some stuff in the background but it's not going to be able to change your conscious present moment decisions and therefore, that stuff can continue to create. Your present moment consciousness and awareness and your actions that you're taking in the present moment can continue to keep you in a state of blocking your money. So you will need to take positive action on your mindset, your attitude in the moment, your use of affirmations. What spiritual books are you reading? What spiritual uh, audio programs are you listening to? What are your daily spiritual practices like? Do you have any? Are you wishing and hoping that things will change for you but not really willing to take action? So this stuff can help to clear some of the previous stuff in your incarnation, in your life, in your past lives, but it still will be the second half of this is your commitment in the present moment to be able to change your life, to be able to act accordingly with your highest intention. This can make it so much easier for you to do that, but there's still that action step that will need to be taken. So. I encourage you to click below this video and to check out um, becoming a part of this group clearing program this month. Um, there can be there is a tremendous amount of this energy that can be cleared for each of us because we've had a tremendous amount of discordant, contradictory, and limiting beliefs, thoughts, perceptions, programs, whatever you want to call them, in our consciousness that need to be released and cleared. Um, I encourage you also, if you have questions about this, please get in touch with me. And please do know that the universe loves you. The universe is a, a universe of abundance. The universe wants you to be supplied in every good way in your life. 
And it is possible for you, no matter how old you are, no matter where you are, no matter what has happened previously in your life, it's possible for you to reconnect to that really natural state of being. It's, really, it's possible for you with commitment to your process, do the inner work, do the spiritual clearing work, and do the conscious mind work and the action work. It is possible for you to absolutely be in the flow, to feel. What we want to feel on a daily basis is not, we don't want to just have millions of dollars in the bank. We don't, you know, let's, let's throw out that goal for a moment. And let's say we want to feel and absolutely know that at every moment all of our needs are met. We can move and go and do what we want to, what we're feeling most inspired to do, what we feel most blissful in our hearts to do because we are in the flow of life. We are in the flow of spirit. We know that nothing can stop us. And that's really ultimately what we're looking for. We're looking for that inner state of feeling that knows all needs met, all needs met. Uh, I am without limitation, I'm without blockage. And we can achieve that, I promise you. So thank you for watching this video, friends. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Peace and blessings.